Okay. Here we go. So we're going to buy something from him, but I don't know what yet. I don't know what yet. Maybe we'll buy that shield for her with the mirror image thing. That seems pretty great. It seems pretty great. Uh, we've already talked to Camilla. Yep, we've talked. We've done everything with Camilla. We've already done everything with Staunton. I want to make sure we talk to everyone and I do all of it. their dialogue. We haven't talked to Ember yet. Tell me about yourself. They call me Ember. I used to live in River City. I'm just going to kind of speed through this stuff and we'll kind of go through the... the Because I will kind of want to get back to exploring and stuff. Um, but yeah. I had many names when I was little. Mom and Dad called me Dove, Cricket, or Kitten. Dad called me his Ray of Sunshine. And when my mom was cross, she called me by a long name, a grown-up one. I can't remember it. I came to live in River City. The good people called me by different funny names, like Ember or Torch or Smokey. I don't know why. Was it because you got burned? Oh, God. They called me Lucky Seven because of my fingers. The girl raises her hand. The middle finger on her right hand and the two smaller fingers on her left are missing. They sometimes called me Grilled Meat and said I was stupid. Oh, my Lord, dude. I like Ember. It's a good word. Embers are like people. On the outside, they're gray and cold like stone, but they're warm on the inside. You can blow on them and they'll start a fire and help you survive a cold night. Wow. Wow. He's far away from the flower country. For those that don't know, this girl was burned at the stake as a witch, but she survived. Which is why she's called Ember. Um, and everyone is like me with pointy ears. There's no rounded ears. Also, her eyes are pitch black. Uh, which is crazy, dude. She She's a special kind of witch. She's an atheist witch, and the crow that is with her talks to her and gives her her powers. Pretty wild, dude. Mom and Dad argued a lot. Dad used to say all the good people should go to the crusade and fight the demons, and Mom said he was silly because it was far away and none of our business. He didn't abandon me. He took me along to the crusades. He said I was born the same year that the hole to the demon world opened. He said that it was a sign I would be one of the heroes who closes it. Of course, I'm not a hero, but I'm here anyway, helping as much as I can. Where'd you get your scars? It happened by accident. My dad and I came sailing down the river to join the crusade. Dad said that all the good people were going to the world wound to heal it. He said that the crusaders were the best people in the world and together we were going to win. But when we arrived at the river city, the crusaders got everything mixed up. They thought my dad and I were bad and decided to burn us at the stake. Dad died and I cried so loudly that one of the good knights realized it was all a big mistake. He started yelling at the other crusaders, even the ones in charge, and then walked right into the fire and got me out. The others wanted to stop him, but he took out his sword and scared them away. That kind knight took me to a healer. I later learned that while the knight was pulling me from the flames, he himself was burned so badly he died not long afterward. Wow. And that lynch mob called themselves crusaders for shame. People always call themselves pretty words, as if calling oneself a paladin or a commander is enough to stop you from being a poor, frightened sinner. But there's one, tr but there was one true knight there, and the others came to their senses at last. Damn, what a backstory! I know, dude. Goosebumps. You worship any deity? Dad taught me to pray to Iomade. He said she was a kind goddess, and she called people to crusade against evil. The knights who burned my dad and me worshipped her too. They even lit the fire with a prayer to her, and she did nothing to help us. That's why she's an atheist. But then one kind knight alone without any gods changed his mind and saved me. Or maybe Iomade compelled the knight. I think the gods are the same as us. They don't understand anything and they're scared of everything. So they hurt themselves and the rest of us. People worship the gods only because they're afraid of being responsible for themselves. And the gods listen to praise and they become smug and arrogant and begin to believe that they're better than us, but they're no better. Just silly sinners like the rest of us. Wow. Sometimes I pray to the gods, different ones, the good ones, the bad ones. I ask them to stop. Stop fighting and hurting each other. I don't know if they ever hear me. But if they do, I mean the knight who wanted to burn me. He was able to change his mind and do a good deed. If he can change, maybe Baphomet can too. Wow. Did you survive on the streets? I sang for them on the streets. They'd often give me coins or bread or sometimes clothes. I shared everything with other homeless. Man, dude, this character is so, like... 
He's very complex. Where do your magic powers come from? These tricks, I have them from my grandma. She used to be my father's grandma. Before that, his father's. I've never even seen her myself. She earlier said that the, co the, the crow taught her stuff. She's very clever and kind. When I lived on the street, sometimes she left food for me or a blanket in the winter. Sometimes I feel her stroking my hair as I fall asleep. But if I open my eyes, there's no one near. She also sent me soot. Oh. The girl scratches the crow's beak and the bird grumbles happily in response. She tells soot how to do different tricks and soot teaches me. It appears the girl doesn't know who exactly gave her these powers, but you can guess from her words that her patron is Andaletta, a powerful archon, one of the Imperial Lords, also known as the Grandmother Crow. Oh, that's cool. And we wouldn't have known that if we didn't pass that check. How cool. Okay. I know, as as Wormelon just said, neat. <laughs> I agree, neat. You're so cheerful. How do you manage to remain so hopeful when we're surrounded by such horror? Hope? No, no. Hope is a lie. What should we hope for? The world is in the hands of demons. The gods can't help or they don't want to. Or they forgot about us altogether. The people know that they're about to be eaten by demons, but still they quarrel with each other and fight and steal. There's no hope. Only us. We'll have to win without hope. It'll be hard. The entire abyss is against us. We can only win by some miracle, which means we'll have to make one happen. What other choice do we have? We'll work a miracle and win because we have to. Dude, she's so cool. Also, interestingly enough, like, I don't know. She's just great. I, I think she's super interesting. She, so far, she's one of my favorite characters, to be honest. She's pretty badass. Can she join the party? She's in the party. She's one She's one of my characters. Yeah. Nanny. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to keep everything in my inventory for now. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be putting stuff in here quite yet. If, if our inventory becomes ridiculous, then that'll change. But Okay. Next is Nenio. Let's talk to Nenio. Boy, I am pleased with you. I asked you to bring me safely, and that's exactly what you to safety, and that's exactly what you did. Indeed, having a follower to aid me is most efficient and frankly pleasing. With you on hand, I shall conquer new horizons, plumb the depths of knowledge hitherto unknown, and scale the dizzying heights of future discoveries. And he stops to catch her breath. What I mean is, him, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude. I foresee immense potential in our future cooperation. Happy to help. You always express your delight so effusively. Hmm? What? Who are you? Nenio stares at you for a while, bewilderment in her eyes, but then it is replaced by recognition. Oh yes, my new follower. So what am I supposed to do? Oh yes, I must provide some verbal encouragement for your as yet modest achievements and try to induce you to strive for more such in of such encouragement. That is the principle that underpins any training. He frowns, but only for an instant. Ah, I see. Your modest nature was unsettled by the overabundance of my gratitude. I do apologize for putting you in such an awkward position. I will never praise you again, unless I forget. Let's get back to the business at hand. Your new assignment will be to take me to the inconspicuous ruins that are located in an even more inconspicuous valley line between Cannabis and Dresden, as soon as it's reasonably, reasonably practical. I'll mark the place on your map with a large red cross so you won't forget it. What's so special about him? I'm glad you asked. This is my greatest hypothesis, my secret project, and I won't pass up the opportunity to share it with you because you are my lo most loyal follower and you are worthy of possessing such knowledge. And he rubs her nose. And also because you're the first person to ever ask me about it. Some time ago, I was walking around the border of the world wound and I met a strange person who was wearing a frayed gray, gray robe. Hey, it's this guy. He was wearing a frayed gray robe and his face was hidden behind an odd white mask. That's that dude we keep seeing randomly around. Of course, I didn't miss the opportunity to ask him about the reason for his absurd appearance. And you know what he said to me? He said, I am the answer, but what is the question? Then he walked off in the direction of the world wound. The next day after I had already forgotten about the first encounter, I had another similar encounter. This time I met an elven woman. Judging by the pointy ears sticking out from behind the mask, I am the answer, but what is the question? She said before taking off towards the world wound. And then I realized everything became clear to me. I know a mystery when I can see one. Consider this one of my myriad talents. Nenio rubs the tip of her nose. After all, all these geysers weren't simply on their way to a costume party, were they? After examining several maps, I determined that they were all heading in one direction, to a place not far from Canabras, a place which is marked as nameless ruins, even on ancient Sarkorian maps. 
That's where I need to go. Unraveling the secret of that place may, will be my greatest discovery. It will secure my place in history, or perhaps even in legend. How do you know where we have to go? You know how to find a beehive in a forest? You need to catch two bees, set them free in two different directions of the forest, and remember the directions they fly in. And you take a map and draw a line showing the bees' routes. Interesting. <laughs> By the way, forest bees do not make any honey. Nenio sighs. I use the beehive principle here, too. For a couple of months, I tracked the strange people in masks and observed the direction in which they were traveling. I collected coordinates, mapped their estimated routes, and made a discovery. All the routes intersected at the nameless ruins not far from Canabras. What do you expect to find there? I haven't the slightest idea. If I knew it was hidden there, I wouldn't be so eager to go. Okay. I think that's all for now. I don't, I don't really want to. Well, let's do it. Then his eyes seem ready to pop out of their sockets in surprise. Don't you see? This is a legendary secret place. Who knows what might happen to me after I lift the veil and uncover the workings of the universe. My mortal body may be unable to contain all the knowledge or perhaps it will ascend to become equal to the gods themselves. I need to write down everything that happens and report my fate to the interested parties in Absalom. And don't forget to praise me as I deserve while you're there. <laughs> okay. Well, now you know, so off we go. Did I just make a rhyme? Perhaps I've discovered poetic talent of myself. Let's conduct an experiment. Quickly, say any word and I'll try to find a rhyme for it right away. Science. That's when thinkers make alliance. Intellectual defiance. Not the best rhymes, don't you think? Well, this experiment was unsuccessful. We learned that I have no poetic talent after all. Many of size. But it's no reason to despair. <laughs> Having a gift of poetry in addition to my inexhaustible intelligence would have been little, a little too much. Besides, I'm catastrophically busy and have no time to spend on writing poetry. My name is Ko. Please call me such. On the grand scale of world history, your name is irrelevant. I have no reason to remember... You see, the brain of any given individual can contain only a limited amount of facts. I only expend my memory on things that are truly important. The laws of thermodynamics, divine esoterica, planar ge geography, things that will lead Galarian to a brighter future. Ninio rubs her nose. Besides, what if I make a great discovery, but I won't be able to remember it because my memory is full of outdated or useless information? What a nightmare that would be. What a loss for the whole of Galarian. I bet... I bet... At, like, the very end of the game... For the first time in the whole time, she's going to call us our name. <laughs> but you do remember your own name, right? Only so I know what to put for the author's name in my encyclopedia. Are there any names worth remembering? There are, and to my deepest regret, there are too many of them. The names of gods and demigods, the names of rulers, conquerors, and other persons by some reason deemed great by the people of Galarian. They etch their names into history, and alas, every self-respecting educated, educated person must know them. But there are some names I'm happy to remember. Great scientists, some of them divine, other mortal... Others mortal, true keepers of knowledge and great experimentalists, the pioneers of knowledge, Erie, Nethys, Eralu Voresh. Eralu Voresh opened the world wound. She's the betrayer of humanity. It's her fault the demons invaded Galarian. Oh yeah, she is the greatest of the greatest. Remember, she's neutral, neutral. True neutral. Just imagine, she managed to open a rift from Galarian to the abyss. No one knew how, no one believed it possible. No one even dreamed of such a thing. And she just did it. It was the experiment of the century. Nenio wipes a tear from her eye. I, I would have been so, so happy if I could have been in her place. Of course, some part of Galarian's population died as a result of her experiment, and the Crusaders are still wrestling with the consequences to this day. But the very essence of what Erlu managed to do was a breakthrough of cosmic significance, both figuratively and literally. Sooner or later, the world wound will be closed. Peace will return to Galarian. As for the victims of the ongoing war, they will be remembered as unfortunate but unavoidable sacrifices made at the altar of science. That's an interesting way to look at things, though I'm not sure the Crusaders would agree with you. Ennio blinks at you perplexed. Were we talking about something? <laughs> What's her alignment? True neutral. She is true neutral. Okay. Where are you from? That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. How to become a scientist. That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. You have a circle tattooed on your shoulder. What does it mean? Oh, that. I do not remember the circumstances of its creation, but I like it. I prefer to think of it as a zero, null, nothing. A center point, an origin of coordinates. It reminds me of how much unknown the world is there to explore. Oh, God, it's going to be some kind of summoning ring, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. Don't you remember how you got the tattoo? That information is irrelevant. I've decided to forget it. How can you just decide to forget important pieces of information? It's just one of my many talents. The secret is to stop thinking about the thing you want to forget. 
And the main thing is to not remember anything you don't need. To filter it. To get the right, right to the essence. I'll teach you someday. Unless I forget. What is the encyclopedia you're working on? The Encyclopedia Golarionica will be published in 100 volumes, 1,000 pages each, plus the author's addenda, appendices, added by future co-authors, and critical commentaries. Okay. There will be a magisterial piece of scholarship that will become part of the mandatory curriculum of every educational institution worth mentioning. Cool. Do you remember your parents, your past, or is all that irrelevant too? All of it is irrelevant on the grand scale of world history. I have no reason to remember such things. I admire the capabilities of your memory. What were you talking about? <laughs> I'll stop torturing you with questions. Uh, okay. Well, she's really fun. This conversation lasted approximately five minutes. She lifts her chin. By the way, did you know that this exact same amount of time the Inquisitors of Canabras needed to find a defendant guilty? <laughs> but to shake off Inquisitors chasing you takes five times as long. That experiment proved that running while clad in heavy armor is not burdensome for them all. For them at all. Can't make the demons wait. Wow. What a freaking fun character. Anything new from Anavia? Tell me about yourself. Where are you from? I'm just going to kind of skin through this real quick. Grew up in a slum. When I was 12, the monks of the Silent Shroud came for us. Creepy guys with their mouths sewn shut. They're the guards of Nisrock. Mom gave me to her friends. And we hid in a secret temple of Desna. I never saw my mom again. Oh, quite the ragtag group you've got here. You got that right. Only the best for you. Nice. Um, how'd you meet Irabeth? I was bumming around time on a while back doing this and that. Desna temples sometimes gave me odd jobs. You know, sometimes they need people with skills like mine. On the surface, it was fine, I guess. After Nadal, the freedom of the River Kingdom should have seemed like heaven. My chance to sit back and enjoy life. But I wasn't happy. There just wasn't any joy in my new life. I was alone. No one cared about me, and I didn't care about anyone else either. Mm. One day I was hired to follow some fellas that the local authorities suspected were Rasmiran spies. I made a rookie mistake, and they caught me. So my body had already decided to do what my mind had been fighting, to finally put me out of my misery, get somebody else to kill me, since I didn't have the guts to do it myself. They grabbed me. I thought they'd get me on the spot, but instead they hogtied me and dragged me off and just... Like an animal going to the slaughter, my only thought was, let's get this over with. They brought me to their stinking cave and threw me on their altar, and I realized who it was. Kuthites. Oh. They tracked me down after all those years, but I didn't care anymore. Wouldn't have even had cared if they had eaten me or whatever. We all gotta go sometime, right? So I was just lying there, staring at those knives pointed at me when fate rolled the dice and I hit the jackpot, Irabeth. There she was, storming into the cave. Wow. Oh. Fierce in her shining armor with a gleaming sword raised, she made quick work of those scumbags, chopped them up like this and that. I didn't even have time to blink. She untied me, and then the girl's face lights up as she chuckles. She looked through the papers they had on the table, and she started swearing like a sailor. So much for I am a day, huh? Nice. How'd you guys end up here? After almost becoming a human sacrifice, I knew I never wanted to leave Erebus' side. There. Cool, cool, cool. What is it like living with her? It's like living. Without her, I wouldn't be. Nice. Sometimes we argue. Can't deny that. Sometimes we bang our fists on the table and yell so loud that the walls shake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sounds like standard marriage. Um, every month, somehow, most of our spare money is spent on Crusader's business. Sure, I get mad about that, but it's part of why I love her so much. That's awesome. What are your responsibilities? Okay. Great, great. I think we only have a couple people left. I know I know that all of this reading is not for everyone. I appreciate y'all for putting up with me. I absolutely love this lore. And most importantly, sometimes when you go through this dialogue, you get like either little locations on your map or little new things or stuff like that. So yeah, it's important that we do this every so often. What do you think about the surface? You pretty much nobody thinks about this anyway. A young blacksmith lost his arm in a fire and couldn't work to feed his wife and baby. They tried their best and lived from hand to mouth, but they were still destitute. In the end, the desperate blacksmith robbed a traveler one night on the road, but there were some brave crusader knights nearby, and they caught the robber and threw him in prison. Not long after, his wife smothered their baby and hung herself. Up here, the same person can proudly say he's protecting the innocent from demons, and then look the other way while the same innocent starves just because they were born into a poor family. Queen Galfrey prolongs her life with sun orchid elixirs that cost enough to feed an entire city. 
Back in our caves, everyone is equally poor, and if one person starves, the whole tribe starves. Stars. We don't abandon our own in times of trouble. That's the power of a tribe. The laws of the surface are made so that some get everything and others get nothing. I might just be a naive fool from the caves, but I don't understand how it's possible to have so much more and share so much less. Wow. Anyway, look who I'm talking to. You must know life on the surface much better than I do. Stop whining! No? Okay. I gotta admit, I'm 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 gonna be honest. I'm I've already decided our evil playthrough is gonna be in this game. And every time I see evil options, I check them. And we are gonna be one evil son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I think I'm gonna come up with like an entire RP backstory for our character. Um and and we are we are definitely gonna be super evil. I haven't decided if I wanna do like a I kinda wanna do like maybe a death knight, like a, a giant two-handed weapon wielding just monster. Um, I think that could be really fun. So we we may have to check that out at some point in the near future. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be fun. Chaotic evil or lawful evil? I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. Probably lawful evil, but I haven't decided yet. Um, Dynacle says, even though I don't really watch Twitch anymore, I still binge your YouTube videos. So this is my thanks for all the entertainment. Thank you for being you. Dynacle, thank you so much, my dude. If you are a YouTube viewer and you appreciate the YouTube and stuff, the best way you can support the channel is to sub on Twitch. My, my, my home is on Twitch and YouTube is where all of my other stuff goes. Um, but really appreciate it, especially if you're one of the prime subbers. Um, since, you know, a lot of people on YouTube do nothing with their prime subs. So if you drop by the channel and drop it here, we do really appreciate it. And thank you for it. Thank you for it. Ko, I'm currently a draconic demon with Lord with your voice pack. It's great. You're a draconic demon Lord with the optimist voice pack. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go with good. I never leave a needy person in trouble. I've I've been given more than most, which means I'm now more able to help others. Oh, also something else I've heard that's really cool. Um, apparently there is like a full evil party in this game. Like if you wanna play an evil character in this game, they give you a full suite of evil characters to be evil with. Um, it's not like there's one or two, you know, like you can, you can actually be a full evil party. Um, which is pretty badass. So I, I think it's gonna, since we're being like the full good party this time, that means that we very much may, may be like the full evil part. We may have like an entire different suite of characters for the next playthrough, um, which is gonna be kind of fun. Because of course, dude, the characters in this game are, are some of the best parts. Like the characters are, we've already, yeah, we already missed Weng, uh, Weng Dog, she would, or Weng Dog. She would have been an amazing character. Um, yeah, so it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see. You said you were you said you were prepared to risk your life to do something meaningful. What exactly did you mean? To invent a new salad and have it named after me. Truth be told, I don't know. It would be much easier if all I really wanted was to kill demons. And a few more demons and more demons after that. Good honest rage and no needless brooding. Um, I think I actually envy the warriors who can live like that. But I can't. If life has taught me anything, it's that there's no easy choices. Dying a glorious death isn't enough. Some heroes of the crusade did that and also saved entire settlements, erected the ward stones. Their actions kept the land of Mendev safe for decades. That's what I want for my dumb short life to have meant something. Damn. Land is a good character. He's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude. I'm glad we're bringing him Beautiful. along. All right, Hillor. Good to see you. What can I do for you? Would you like to renew your forces with excellent fighters? Oh, 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 this is the Pathfinder. Okay. Uh, tell me about your confrontation with the Spinner of Nightmares. I don't know what this is. Oh, wow. This is a lot. Uh, oh, wow. So he's trying to save his daughter, Lori, from the Spinner of Nightmares and their leaders, the Labyrinth of the... Their, um, I confirmed she was the leader of the Labyrinth of the Mind. I don't even know what that is. What about you? Yeah, this is the guy that you talk to if you want to get more um, more people in your party. So you can have custom members of your party. Hold on. I'm going to save real quick. What it, can we respec? My companions and I need good training. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Interesting. 
Is this just free? Really? We can just respec our characters whenever we want? For the first time. Does it start becoming like stupid expensive afterwards or is it like... The retraining option is bugged. You shouldn't be able to do it on your difficulty. Nanny. Hold on. Really? I mean, that would make sense. I mean, difficulty, this difficulty is designed for people that know what they're doing. Um, only one save slot is available in this mode. The game saves automatically in key points and upon the game's exit. Wow. All right here. Enable character retrain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is bugged. Yeah, it shouldn't allow me to do that. Interesting. Okay. Well, Madrakas saved me. <laughs> For those who don't know, my buddy Madrika is helping me with my party. He is uh, a very experienced Wrath the Righteous player, and uh, and he's he's been helping me out with um, different and interesting build ideas, which I've been uh, doing. So like right now, you know, our main character, our main character is going full Deliverer, um, but like we're gonna be doing some some different things with Zen Archer, uh, Spirit Hunter. I think is actually gonna be different too. We're, we're already multi-classing her into a Paladin Oracle. Um, by the way, Madrika, I don't know if you're here. Are we just going? full Oracle for her for the rest of the time? Or do we dip into Paladin or anything else anymore? He's, he's between now and work, so. Yeah, I need to just contact Madrika's boss and like pay for him to uh, like, can I just buy him for like two weeks? Um, Yeah, full Oracle. Okay, cool. He, he's talking to me in Discord. He says full Oracle. Okay, cool, great. We're gonna see Beautiful. how that goes. Uh, Okay, so that's Hillor. Do we have anything with Sila? I'd like to know more about you. Tell me about yourself. I'm a little bit from Geb, a little bit from Katapesh, but mostly from the Knights of Iomade. You've come by the long road, haven't you? A very long one. Um, a traveler is expected to have amusing stories. Unfortunately, I only have three tales of interest, and I'd like to save them for our next feast. Otherwise, I won't have anything to show for myself when it's time to start bragging. Um, isn't your attitude towards life a little too carefree, especially for a paladin? Is that a hint of approach? If you're only just asking, then no, I don't think so. You have to know when it's time for jokes, and when it's time for mourning, the right moment for joys and for sermons. Hmm. I like it. That makes sense. There's a big difference between imminent death and probable death with a glimmer of hope, wouldn't you say? So here we are traveling through the desert, me and my friend, a priestess of Serenay, along with a little rat folk fellow who'd asked for our help, and two cutthroats. We get to the rat folk village and saw their bodies lying around, all drained dry. We figured we'd have to fight vampires. That's how the little rat folk described the monsters who attacked their village. That's why we went in all brazen-like. The sun was high and the vampires couldn't attack till dusk. But we never got a chance to look around. Black shadows, quick as the wind, attacked us from all sides. Not vampires, but chupacabras! Oh! Chupacabras! One of the lads we pulled from the gallows got killed right away. The second one ran for his life. That left me, the rat folk, and Kira. That was the name of the priestess. And we all steeled ourselves for the fight for, of our lives. And just when we thought the end had come... Chupacabra surrounding me like a pack of dogs around a bear and a rat folk friend wounded and down in the teeth of the quickest of those blasted monsters was clenched on Kira's shoulder right then when all hope was lost. The other lad from the gallows suddenly comes running back. He kills the beast attacking Kira. I'm sure you know what turning, what a turning point in a fight looks like. Well, this was it. A moment before we were all lost and a moment later we had it back under control. The Chupacabras dropped dead one by one. Little rat folk is reunited with his family who were hiding in the basement. The priestess and I closed the eyes of that boy from the gallows who saved us. It was a shame he didn't survive the fight. May the gods keep his soul in his journey through the afterlife. Damn. It's a good story. He could have died in disgrace on the gallows, but instead he died a hero. And I'd fancy this stunt earned him some points at his final judgment. It's, a sm it's smart to remember our journey doesn't end in death. If it had not been for, the mercy, for that mercy, Milos, that was his name, would be hanging from a noose, and me, Kira, and the rat folk would be dead in that village. Someone told me that kind of deed done by an unkind person is a hundred times more precious by the same token, an evil deed done by a noble soul is a hundred times more horrifying. That's what I really wanted to say. The Chupacabras were just a good starting point. Nice. 
What made you become a paladin? Ooh, I roamed the streets of Solku with other homeless orphans. I stole, I fought, I was a hired sword for a bit. Not the proper origin for a paladin. Solku was the city of orphans, widows, and widowers. Knolls decimated the city regularly. My parents were among their victims. People there heard about new deaths before they finished mourning their previous losses. Hey, Onimaru18, thank you for the five bomb. Really appreciate it. Hey, MNP, how are you? Um, while others saw them as saviors and protectors, I was busy pricing up their noble horses and their gleaming mithril armor. Wondering just, I want mithril armor? Uh, a thief lives one day at a time, and that's what they say. I was the type who never thought past the next job. Anyhow, I was able to sneak into the knight's camp and steal one of their mithril helmets. And I was right there when a null attacked the helm's Nanny. owner. Asked me what's her name. Bellicoast with the five bomb! Thank you. They dealt a blow to her unprotected head. A null like that... A knoll like all those others she'd fearlessly driven from the gates of Solku. The one blow was fatal, but who was to really blame for her death? The knoll attacker or the young thief named Sila? Even a seemingly small misdeed can have terrible consequences. Yes, you're right a thousand times over. I hate to say it, but I just didn't see it back then. And if I had never... I, I'm liking... You know, I remember... Well, that was a T2 bomb as well. Thank you, Bellicose. Damn. 10 T2. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Yuki says, I think you missed one quest in the marketplace if you want 100%. Oh, oh, we haven't even finished the marketplace. Yeah, the marketplace is unfinished. Yes. Uh, Owsie says, did you see my five bomb? I didn't, Owsie, but scrolling up, I see it right there. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much as well. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we are not done with the marketplace. We, ha we have a lot left to do there. In fact, I even have like a notepad. I'm keeping track of stuff we have to do there still. So yeah, we're good.